Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of The Touch Travels. This week I went off to see England play Wales in the Six Nations Rugby. Um, it's a trip I make quite often uh, as someone who was injured playing rugby. Uh, I often get tickets to go and watch the England games, so uh, I often take up that opportunity. But I thought I'd just give you an experience of what it's like going to the game as a, like, as a wheelchair user for the day uh, and uh, take you along for the ride. So I met up with my friend Michael at Waterloo Station. Uh, the station itself is pretty accessible and so is the underground line getting to it. Um, the lifts are alright, uh, they're a bit slow but they work and they're not too hard to find. What I do find at the station at Waterloo is that um, on match days all the trains are often delayed. Uh, I often find that um, they only give you a very short warning as to which platform you're going to be on and then you have to kind of run to the platform. Uh, they then usually argue that you've not given them enough time to get the ramp out but you have to kind of argue case that actually they didn't give us enough warning to get to the right platform. Uh, so usually after a little while, I do manage to find one of the trains that they'll let me on, but it can be a bit of a frustrating experience. But I always get there in the end and I don't usually have to book assistance uh, in advance. Me, Michael. So to start off, yes, I do dip my chips into the McFlurry. Disgusting uh, human. I just think it's... And you just mix the trash with the trash and it creates more glorious trash as well. But no, I've known Max since university. Uh, he's graciously invited me today. I guess I am an attaché to the Tetra Travels. And we will see if there's a diplomatic meeting. Yeah, we've already had chaos getting here. So uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Arriving at Twickenham Station was a bit of a learning experience for me. I've tried it before, years ago, and they didn't used to have a lift. They used to have like a little tank thing that took over the stairs. It took 15 minutes to go up one side and 15 minutes to go down and it was one of the scariest things ever. But I heard they'd renovated the station so I thought I'd give it a try and was uh, really pleased to find out that they'd actually got the lift and it was all really easy to get in and out. Uh, the walk from the station is, I, I, I will at a fairly good pace, so it was maybe about 5-6 minutes. Um, but I think for someone else it might be a bit longer. Security was really easy. Uh, we got through. They didn't really check my bags much. Um, and then we got through uh, with the tickets on the app and it all went quite smoothly. Uh, you have to kind of push through the crowds getting under the stadium, but it's all fairly easy and people are willing to move. It's, it's a pretty friendly crowd at Twickenham. So uh, I'd, I'd recommend and people usually have a bit of a laugh with you as you go through if you do catch them. Um, I've never once had issues like I might have done at the football but uh, yeah, it's all good. And eventually I found my uh, my friends from the Injured Players Foundation who uh, I was meant to be meeting on the match day. But it took me a while to get through the crowds, but we got there. The Injured Players Foundation helps support rugby players that had catastrophic injuries. Uh, we often meet up and uh, meet each other and it become quite a social crowd, uh, especially ever since COVID when we all met up on Zoom calls. So it's nice to see each other in person again and uh, be able to go and enjoy the rugby together. But yeah, it's a fantastic charity, and if you do get a chance, please donate to them. Right, at the game, at the game with the guys. Uh, the, these guys are from the Injured Players Foundation. Just going to see what they think of what's going to happen. I reckon they're going to win by 10 points. What do you reckon, Paul? By 4. 4? They're going by 4. 24 14. 24 20. We'll win by. The score. The score of 30. 22. And let's hear from our local. 27 34 to Wales. Yeah. That's Wales. Yeah. England, Not England, England, England. Yeah. Wales. Wales. And what's that? Wales. Wales. Bloody big fishes in Wales. Ignore the Wales. Singing hymns and dyers. Land of my fathers. Out here in the world. Let's try it off. So I normally sit up on the terrace, which I think has got a really good view and you get a nice tactical view of the game. Um, you can also pit sit on pitch side, but the reason I prefer terrace is that you don't get wet if it does rain and you're a bit more protected from the weather because uh, it can be pretty cold at the rugby. So yeah, I definitely recommend if you can get it, go up on the terrace. But either way, you'll have a fantastic experience. It's a great atmosphere. The crowd are fantastic and yeah, I think you'll have a great, great time. The game was a uh, pretty hard to swallow because uh, England started out really well, uh, took a 17 point lead and then almost gave it away. You can see Wales sort of crept back into it to the point where they were within one try and the ending was very tense uh, with 
Wales having the ball and looking to get that final score. It looked at this point though England had won it uh, because the Welsh had dropped the ball forward. But then it was adjudicated that the England uh, player had actually got his fingers to the ball and it was a deliberate knock-on. So Wales got another penalty which put them in the England half and allowed them to put pressure on us. So at this point the crowd was pretty edgy. I don't know whether it just feels this way but it seems lately that England have a habit of sort of losing games they uh, they should win or at least making games a lot tighter than they should be. Uh, we've got a real good lineup, and we've got some really good youth coming through. There just seems to be there's something not quite connecting for them uh, over the last year or two. Uh, so hopefully they can get some good form going into the World Cup next year and can sort of get on top of those issues and be a bit more dominant. Our lineup should make it that way, but uh, unfortunately at the moment it's just not panning out for us one thing or another. Uh, it could just be that uh, the other teams have better coaching, but uh, Eddie Jones is one of the best coaches in the world. But yeah, at the moment, it's just not quite clicking for us. Saying that, we did manage to win the game and uh, beat the Welsh. screwed up but we got there and uh, keeps the six nations alive so fingers crossed it carries on that way and we get it back but France have won again today and uh, looks like they're in the bot like the driving seat so we'll see. As someone with mobility issues I always think it's important to check out the toilets. The toilets at Twickenham are, and especially the terrace are actually pretty good, uh, reasonably accessible. The only thing is by the end of the game they can sometimes be a bit manky so uh, maybe use them a bit earlier on and they're absolutely fine. Uh, for the terrace, there's about three uh, toilets for about 30, 40 people, so not too bad. I do find if you're down at pitch side, there's not enough toilets for the amount of people down there. And you do have to wait. You might have to wait the whole of half time just to go to the loo. So you might need someone else to go get your beers if, if that's the situation. But yeah, uh, I'll do a quick bit of footage of the uh, toilets up in the terrace. Uh, but yeah, I definitely recommend if you can get up in that terrace, it's... Firstly, I think a better view, you don't get wet, and the toilets are better quality and more of them. Is this part of the texture travels? Oh, it is. I always do a toilet review. <laughs> Unfortunately, my camera stand broke on the way home, so I didn't actually get any footage uh, wheeling along just to show you what the crowds are like leaving Twickenham. It can be pretty busy, and walking up to the station, you've got to negotiate quite a large crowd. What I find is if you don't follow the signs and stick to the right, you can actually bypass a massive amount of the queue and as a wheelchair user they'll let you through the barriers to get into the station easier so uh, don't just follow the crowd into where the state where it says the station kind of skip the crowd and you'll be all right as long as you can kind of prove you've got a disability and that there's a reason for you not to be sort of pushing through because when i personally go through that massive crowd i find it quite difficult and quite sort of claustrophobic because you can't see over anyone you can't see anything and it can get a bit like sort of get pushed along and it's not very pleasant so I kind of use that as a reason not to do it that way and uh, bypass that but yeah top tip if you ever go into the game. The trains are also pretty busy but they do try and put you on the carriages further down the station which are a bit more empty you'll see the ones near uh, the sort of entrances to Twickenham station pretty damn full so like yeah don't want to go don't want to go on those ones um, but yeah it's uh, it's not too bad if you go further down the platform. See ya! All round, it was a pretty long day. Um, I think I set off from home about two o'clock, and I didn't get back until about nine, ten o'clock. But well worth it. I always love going to the rugby. I think the atmosphere is great. The fans are usually, although albeit a bit drunk, usually pretty friendly. Um, and yeah, I think it's just a really good experience. If you're into your rugby or not, I think definitely try and get a ticket. I believe for people that aren't uh, part of the Injured Players Foundation, you have to go through a ballot and become a member of like the England Rugby Club. Um, I'll try and find the links and put those below uh, just so you can sort of hopefully get tickets yourself. But yeah, uh, I yeah fully recommend the experience. Give it a go and uh, yeah. Hope you enjoyed the video. That'll be it for another week of the Tetra Travels. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, see you next time.
please like, subscribe and share it and uh, hope you look forward to the new content that's coming out. See ya.